for handheld devices to game console, but most recently I've started computer gaming. The game that I play the most is called League of Legends, and it's a game that requires skill and precision. My brothers and I usually play it on our free time, and although it's a fun game to play, it kind of uh, we kind of get frustrated, and most gamers like to call it raging. So I remember the other day, I me and my brother were playing a game of League, and right before I got a kill on an enemy player, my character stopped moving. While my brother was raging at me for letting him get away, I was quickly trying to figure out why my character wasn't moving. I realized that my computer mouse wasn't working. And as most gamers know, one cannot simply pause an online game. So we ended up losing the match. My rage prompted me to search online for a better gaming mouse, and it made me better appreciate this common electronic device. A computer mouse is an input device paired with a computer that is often moved along a flat surface to move on an air to move an on-screen cursor, which can be used to select different items by pressing on the mouse buttons. According to a May 6, 2014 article from The Atlantic, more than 76% of respondents to their survey said that they used a mouse on the day they answered or in the week beforehand. And of those 76%, 50% of them said that they used it at work. So it's apparent that the computer mouse is relevant in our everyday life but not many people realize this fact. So in order for us to fully appreciate computer mouse, I'm going to go over the history of it. Second, I'm going to go over how it works. And lastly, I will look into the future of what's in store for it. So the history of the computer mouse spans 52 years, and during its early years, it went through a couple of changes. According to the 2015 Computer History Museum, Bill English was the first mouse prototype or built the first mouse prototype from Douglas Engelbert's sketches in 1963. The mouse had two knife edge wheels that were connected to an analog to track its movement, and it only had one button. According to an article in Map World from December 9, 2008, Jack Howley and Bill English, inspired by Engelbert's work, designed a digital mouse for Xerox PARC in 1972. This was the first mouse to have a ball track in it, and it was also the first digital mouse. Now that I've gone over the early history, let's look at the evolution of the mouse in the past decade. So the first thing that was a big deal was that the mouse became wireless. This was easy because no one likes the cord, and it was, when you transport it, it got really tangled, and no one likes that. So it was very it was comfort for other people to enjoy it. And it was also gave the mouse a farther distance, so you didn't have to sit at a desk. You could have the mouse on your lap or on a different surface, and that was also a great thing to do. And the next thing is the gaming mouse. In recent years, gaming has become really popular, and it's actually been declared a surreal sport. So in order to deal with this, they've made actual gaming mouses just specifically for gaming. And um, they do a variety of features that regular computer mouses do not. They have a higher sensitivity, so if you're playing a first-person shooter, it's easier to scan the, uh, through the screen and shoot whoever you want to shoot. Um, you can also change the palm of the computer mouse, which can better fit your grip, and it's better for comfort and ease when you're killing people. Um, <laughs> this, uh, you can also change the surface of the mouse uh, to fit the sensor, because um, mouses do have different sensors, and that's all highly technological with the gaming mouse. Although you've seen uh, how the computer mouse has changed since 1963, a lot of people still don't know how it works. Um, the, there's a couple key components to allow this device to function, and most of us usually use the optical mouse. First off is the LED technology. There's an LED light mounted on the bottom of the mouse, and there's also a photoelectric cell. The LED is a, light, a little tiny light bulb that is solely illuminated by the movement of electrons through a semiconductor material. And then the photoelectric cell is a electronic device that is generated that generates electricity when light falls on it. So these two work really well together on the mouse. So when the, you turn on your computer, the LED light turns on. And it, when you set it on the desk, the light reflects from the bottom of the desk back into the photoelectric cell, and it magnifies that light. Then the light cell, there's a light detector chip that receives this, and it measures the light and converts that, that movement into digital signals. And this is how the computer and the mouse talk, and it registers your movements. There are also um, buttons and a scroll wheel on the regular mouse. The buttons are on the left and the right side, and they are they are on top of micro switches that detect when you press them. And on the scroll wheel, there is a switch mechanism that calculates when you're rotating it and if you click it. Now that I've gone over how it works, what does the future bring for the computer mouse? 
although it is a uh, although it is relevant in today in our today life, in future years it might become irrelevant. And this is mainly due to touch and recognition technology. According to a November 10, 2013 article in Engadget by Sean Buckley, we're rapidly approaching a future of touchscreens, motion sensors, and visual imaging control solutions. And this can be seen through our smartphones, tablets, and laptops. Our smartphones are all touchscreen. Our tablets, like such as iPads, you can just touch them. You don't need a computer mouse. And laptops usually come with a touchpad, so it's unnecessary to buy a computer mouse. Another thing is that a lot of our technology does uh, have voice recognition. An example of this is the Windows speech recognition, which is offered for free for Microsoft users. According to PC World on November 6, 2013, you can tell Windows speech recognition to, pre to do pretty much anything on your PC. It can open browsers, including tabs, new tabs, apps, and as well as Microsoft Office documents. Another reason why this computer mouse is going extinct is because of is because of other devices which are better suited to their needs. According to Digital Trends on August 16, 2015, professionals who need specialized tools for their work have already moved on from mice to other devices such as artists and designers who are who create drawings using Wacom Cintiq tablet stylus. So instead of using the mouse to do Photoshop and all that kind of stuff, they have their own tablets already, so the mouse is already becoming extinct. And also, we are working on virtual gaming, which could be happening in the near future, which could spell the end for gaming, uh, PC gaming as we know it. So we first we went over the history of the computer mouse, and then we went over how it works, and then we looked into the future of what it holds. Understanding how the computer mouse works is insightful into understanding how other electronic devices can work. And I hope that all, even though it's going to sink, you guys will appreciate your mouse because you don't know when it's going to dad on you when you need it most. 